and then I would go about uh, get rid of this opening here. I'm not quite sure what the design intent was there, but I'm going to use delete again. And a tip for uh, deleting faces, depending on how the face um, surface looks, if there's a split line in it, and I'm going to zoom in over here, you can see there's a arc here and an arc here, and there's the split surface between the two. I'm going to make sure tangents turned on to that, but if I went over to this whole face, it's all one face. So I could technically leave it on single face and be fine with it. So I'm going to leave the selection option set to single face. Pick the face. Make sure the heel's turned on. OK, and that that opening is now gone. Now, if I go over to my part navigator, I can see there's my delete. There's my move for that hole and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and move this slot down because it's in the wrong position for my design. Again, choosing move. And this time I'm going to do tangent faces, so it grabs all the inside faces there. Double click the sphere, put it in the center, and now I can go ahead and drag that down to maybe that position right there. Let's make it a nice 240 to make it even. Now, if I needed to make that slot a little bit smaller, again, I, I wouldn't go back and redesign it all again. So I'm going to go back in and use move. And this time, instead of tangent faces, I'll do a single face. And I'm just hitting shift and deselecting the faces I didn't want. And I can see up here in my list, there's one. If I go ahead and grab another one, you can see two. Shift and deselect. So it's a little tip there. And now I can go ahead and drag that face down to something smaller. So let's do uh, 320. So again, no features with that body, and I'm still able to, to modify it. And I probably need to make some more holes in here. So going back into the more gallery, taking a look at what I have inside of here, I think I want to reuse a pattern face. And I'm going to reset it, this little guy up at the top of the uh, dialog box. And you'll find these within a lot of dialog boxes that you use. Go ahead and reset that. And then just go ahead and select the uh, faces that I want to move or put in the pattern. I'm going to turn on tangent there. And for my vector, I'm going to pick that top surface because I know it, it's planar. And then for my layout, oop, I miss, missed it there, so I'll pick that face again. The point I want it to rotate or boat, and then I want to do four with, I don't know, an offset of, uh, let's do 100, let's see what we get. That's too much because the other one slid off. I could actually drag these, that's not going to let me do it. Drag the grip here and just dial it back down so it's in position, so we'll, we'll make it 50. So pretty quickly, I've brought in a step file from somebody, don't know who it came from, and I was able to modify that. I could even resize some of the blends in here. So changing this blend to a six, and let's just take a look at my material thickness. So it's roughly one millimeter, and I can go ahead and change the radius on the upside so I get a nice consistent um, material through all of this. So again, real quick, was able to, to walk through that. Um, if you wanted to go back to your, your assembly, I could just drag this back down, throw it on top, depending on the assembly I wanted to be in, or just close it all together. Fit this and unblank it all. So now you can see that I've got my assembly with that new dust shield, everything, is, is the way I wanted my design to be. And I can send this back to my supplier or manufacturer and say, this is the intent of my, my dust shield. Okay, so in, in order to, uh, to collaborate effectively with other um, suppliers or customers, you're often gonna have to modify that CAD model and either being